Marionette by Genghis Klopp Trixie still plays with dolls. Glancing furtively about the room, Trixie made sure there was no one around. Not that there would be normally, but she liked to be sure anyway. The door was closed, the blinds were drawn, and the room was only lit by a blue ball of magic that hung in the air, casting its glow over the room. Once she was satisfied she wasn't going to be disturbed, Trixie trotted over to her closet and slid the door open. Her heart stopped for a brief moment when her eyes fell upon the doll lying lazily against the wall, its head drooping to the side. Then... To make up the lost time, her heart started beating twice as fast. She grabbed the doll by the hoof and pulled it out of the closet. Looking at it, she realised that over the past few months it had been worn down some. But luckily, it was still a pretty good approximation of what Twilight looked like. The coat, the mane, they were both the right colour, and even her cutie mark was perfectly accurate. Her face was a bit saggy, but that was all right. Trixie didn't mind much. Lifting the doll with her magic, Trixie carried her over to the bed that was pushed up against the wall. As she crawled under the covers, dragging Twilight behind her, Trixie mumbled to herself, Now then, what sort of game should we play today? A bubble of blue magic encased itself around Twilight's hoof and pulled it towards Trixie's bottom. Trixie pretended not to notice, as the doll reached for her back and touched the spot right below her tail. Trixie jumped. Twilight, where do you think you're putting your hoof? She batted the doll away. Don't get any funny ideas, Twilight. I'm watching you. She punctuated the final syllable by rolling her tongue over her lips. Her and Twilight sat in silence for a moment before an idea sprang into Trixie's mind. Grinning, she lit her horn and lifted the heavy blankets from the bed. She folded them into a sort of cone shape, with her and the Twilight doll inside, with her glowing horn being the only thing illuminating the darkness. Trixie looked at Twilight, who was sitting opposite her. Oh no, Twilight! she said in an overly dramatic voice. Whatever shall we do? The snowstorm has forced us to take shelter in this empty cabin, but there's no fireplace to start a fire, and no blankets either. We'll freeze to death if we don't think of something. Twilight's limp hoof lifted into the air and wrapped itself around Trixie. She glanced into the doll's eyes. That's brilliant, Twilight. We'll use each other's body heat to stave off the hypothermia. But I fear it won't be enough. Oh, if only there was some other way to generate more heat. The dolls have slid down Trixie's back and over the curve of her hindquarters. Trixie fidgeted nervously. Well, I suppose we could... You know. Twilight's hoof grazed along Trixie's flank, gravitating towards the centre of the curve. But it would only be to keep ourselves warm. Trixie closed her eyes as she felt the doll's soft hoof brush over her snatch. And it wouldn't mean anything else. She bit her lip, feeling something spreading her apart then gasped when it touched inside her. Trixie whipped round, staring into the doll's eyes. I can't lie any more, Twilight. I want you. She threw herself on top of the doll, giggling as she rolled under the covers with it. She stopped when Twilight was on top of her and looked up. She closed her eyes and kissed the doll, slowly switching positions so that she was on top as she did. Now looking down at Twilight, Trixie grabbed one of the doll's legs and lifted it up, spreading apart its crotch. Trixie looked wistfully down at the doll. It's the only way to keep away the chill, she said, spreading her own hind legs and scooching closer to the doll.
She placed their crotches together. Trixie's pussy was now slightly damp and rubbed herself against Twilight. She held one of the doll's hind legs up to her face and humped at its decidedly less wet nethers. Trixie bit her lip, humping the doll for all she was worth, grinding her slick pussy against the doll and wetting the fabric with her arousal. Her mouth hung open slightly as hot breath filled the tiny room she'd created with the bedsheets. Very quickly things became hazy and even in the semi-darkness Trixie could tell that she was soaking the sheets. Not that she cared much. After a few minutes, Trixie could feel herself starting to get dizzy from the heat, so she threw the covers aside and continued rubbing herself against Twilight's crotch. I think it's working, Twilight, she said through ragged breaths. I feel warm enough to melt all the snow away. With sweat beading around her forehead, she stopped humping and simply started sliding up and down against the doll, coating its entire crotch and the inside of its leg with her wetness. While she was doing this, Trixie pulled something out of the closet with her magic and put it around Twilight's neck. Trixie gasped as realistically as she could. Twilight! That's the Alicorn Amulet, she said indicating the paper and crayon reproduction she'd placed on the doll's neck. What are you doing with that? As if to answer her own question, Trixie released Twilight and placed the doll behind her. She glanced back, her eyes wide with fake terror. No, Twilight, it's an evil amulet. Don't let it make you a slave to your most darkest desires. Several more objects came flying out of the closet, including the rope she'd so often used in her magic shows. The rope tied itself around Trixie's tail, lifting it up and exposing her dripping pussy lips. She cried out in shock as the rope looped around a rafter, tying in such a way that her face was forced into the bedsheets and her butt was lifted into the air, her snatch completely vulnerable. Looking back as best she could, she saw Twilight lift her hoof, a paddle tied to the doll, and hold it over Trixie's ass cheeks. Wait, Twilight, she said desperately. The amulet is making you give in to your naughtiest desires. You don't have to do... Ah! She cried out as the paddle smacked against her cheek, leaving a red mark. Trixie's pussy winked. Biting her lip, Trixie said, Please, Twilight! She winced as the paddle hit her again. Precum was now leaking out of her like a loose water faucet. She made the doll hit her other cheek a few times as well. As Trixie lay face down on the bed, panting, she extracted another object from the closet. What looked like a belt with a dildo attached to it floated out. She watched it glide past her face, rubbing her cheeks as it passed, and then tie itself around Twilight's waist. Trixie breathed in sharply. <gasps> Twilight, she mumbled. What are you planning to do with that? The doll's silent gaze watched her with indifference as it moved closer to Trixie's winking folds. Trixie tensed waiting for it to enter. But before it did, she heard the door open. Hey, Trixie, I was wondering if you... Whoa. Twilight stood in the doorway, her jaw hanging open. She glanced first at Trixie, then at the doll, then at the ropes tied around Trixie and the doll. Her eyes slowly fell back on Trixie. Okay, said Trixie slowly her head still pressed against the bed. I realize how this must look, but trust me, there is a perfectly reasonable, uh, uh reason for all... She glanced around. This. Twilight nodded deliberately. Yeah, no, I think I see the reason. Not really hard to guess. She looked once again at the ropes, 
I only really have one question, though. Why the doll? Trixie gulped, glancing back at the bedildoed Twilight doll. Uh, well, you see, I, uh... She trailed off, her face reddening. You know, said Twilight, shutting the door behind her and making her way towards Trixie. You live in my house now, so you're going to have to play by my rules. Trixie tried to get up, but though her magic had released the ropes, Twilight's magic had taken over. She struggled to free herself, but to no avail. Look, Twilight, Trixie said. I'm, I'm sorry I had sex with a doll that looked like you, but I promise it was for a good reason. Twilight grinned wickedly. Oh, I think I can guess just fine. Twilight pulled herself onto the bed, crawling up behind Trixie. She stuck out her hoof, running it over Trixie's bare flanks. With the rope holding her tail out of the way, she had a clear view of Trixie's pussy. Her hooves moved across the red cheeks and towards her waiting lips. Placing a hoof on either side, she spread Trixie apart, revealing her inner pinkness. With one hoof holding half of it open, she moved her other hoof to the centre of Trixie's pussy. She pressed down a little bit, forcing the tip inside. Trixie sucked in her breath. <gasps> Twilight! What are you doing? she asked, like she didn't already know what the answer was going to be. Twilight smiled at her, rubbing her hoof against Trixie's clit. It winked at her, so she rubbed it some more, sliding up and down Trixie's slick pussy. You seemed to be pretty into it before, so I thought you might enjoy the real thing. Taking her hoof off, Twilight tilted her head back and held it over her open mouth. Her tongue snaked out and licked the bottom of her hoof. She licked her hoof clean and then looked back at Trixie. Here's looking at you, kid. With a mischievous grin, she moved closer to Trixie, pressing her snout against the other mare's slit. Trixie moaned as Twilight ground her snout against Trixie. With her nose inside Trixie's pussy, she could smell her arousal clearly, and it was starting to make her wet as well. She pulled back, sticky liquid covering her nose. Like a dog, she stuck her tongue out and licked her snout, tasting the slightly sweet juices that oozed from Trixie. Leaving Trixie's lips closed, Twilight ran her tongue over the outside and around the nub of her clit and over the creased folds that made up her outer labia. As she licked, she could feel Trixie tensing her pussy with each pass of her tongue. Grinning, Twilight used only her tongue to spread Trixie apart and lick inside her. She could feel the pressure of Trixie's lips trying to squeeze her tongue as she slid up and down, the first inch or so of her tongue fully inside Trixie's pussy. While she lapped up Trixie's juices like a dehydrated desert traveller, Twilight moved her hoof to her own snatch and started to rub herself. She started gently at first, but then much more vigorously, as her licking too became increasingly more vigorous. Soon Twilight was sucking on Trixie as she played with her own nub, fondling it softly. Trixie's chest was heaving up and down, and her heart pounded. The smell of sex and sweat filled the room. As she took a moment to breathe, Twilight caught a glimpse of the Twilight doll by her side. Her lips dripping with Trixie's juice, Twilight smiled naughtily. She picked up the doll and removed the strap on dildo. Tossing the doll aside, she said, Goodbye, loser. Hearing this, Trixie craned her neck back to see Twilight tying the strap on around her waist. She nearly opened her mouth to protest, but realised she wasn't fooling anyone. She wanted Twilight to screw her with that dildo more than she'd ever wanted anything in her life. Placing her head against the bed, she waited for Twilight to enter her. 
her pussy winking eagerly. Twilight, however, decided to tease Trixie a bit first. With the phallus dangling off her midsection and the leather strap rubbing up against her slit, Twilight took the floppy dildo and slid it up and down Trixie's snatch. She made sure not to let it slip in, instead letting Trixie lubricate the dildo with her pussy juice. Once it was fully coated, Twilight teasingly pressed it inside a bit, but only to yank it back out immediately. Trixie whimpered, Twilight, please. Twilight shrugged. As you wish, Trixie. Chuckling to herself, Twilight dragged the rod up Trixie's slit and right past the top to the puckered opening of her anus. Lightly pressing her surrogate dick up against Trixie's asshole, Twilight said, Well, you did say the magic word. With a firm thrust, she entered the incredibly tight hole. Fortunately, the lubrication from Trixie's juices were enough to allow Twilight inside, though just a bit. Twilight leaned forward, her fake member still inside Trixie's ass, as she whispered into her ear, Bet you didn't see this one coming. With a soft nibble of Trixie's ear, Twilight pulled out almost all the way, then bucked her hips and shoved herself back inside with a loud schlick. Twilight humped Trixie over and over again until her butthole was loose enough that Twilight was going in all the way to the hilt, which had the added benefit of pulling the straps tight against her pussy, a feeling she was enjoying more with each thrust. By this time, Twilight had lost control of her magic and the ropes fell loose, though Trixie kept her tail raised. With her limbs now free, Trixie spread out, but kept her rear raised as Twilight fucked her in the ass. Her tongue lolled out, landing in the same place she had previously wet while rubbing her pussy against the doll. So with Twilight behind her thrusting her dildo into Trixie, she could also taste her own pre-cum, which aroused her even more. Twilight had her hose on Trixie's hips and was pounding Trixie's increasingly less tight ass, and she could feel the leather getting more and more wet as she went. After a few minutes, or maybe it was a few hours, it was hard to tell in the sex-filled haze of Twilight's mind. Twilight was sure Trixie must be close to climaxing, and she sure wasn't going to let that happen without feeling the inside of Trixie's slit for herself. So, with a pop, Twilight pulled the dildo out of Trixie's ass, the elastic flesh sticking resolutely to the shaft until it pulled all the way out, and removed the belt. Trixie rolled over and looked at Twilight, confused. Twilight, what's the matter? I... Twilight shushed Trixie by putting a hoof over the other mare's lips. Leaning in, she brought their lips together and shared a quick kiss with Trixie before pulling away, though not before getting a good taste of Trixie's saliva. Don't worry, said Twilight. We're not done yet. Pressing her snout against Trixie's neck, Twilight kissed her way down Trixie's chest and back to her dripping pussy. She gave it one long lick before spreading it apart with her magic. Trixie prepared herself for Twilight to start licking her again, but instead Twilight lowered her head and lined up her horn with Trixie's hole. Feeling Trixie's warm folds wrap around her horn, tensing with every heartbeat. Trixie breathed in sharply as Twilight pulled out and then rammed her horn in again. Without even realising it, Trixie started to move her hips, pushing herself into twilight each time the other mare thrust, and pulling back out every time she pulled out. Twilight could feel the splash of Trixie's sticky pre -cum on her head as she fucked her with her horn. Already near her limit from the anal sex she'd just endured, it didn't take long for Trixie to reach her limit.
She sat up quickly and put her hooves on the back of Twilight's head. Shoving her in as far as she could, as her body was hit with a wave of pleasure. Her cum poured out on Twilight's head, dripping down her lips and over her face. As Twilight extracted herself from Trixie, she licked her lips, tasting Trixie's orgasm. Smirking, she said, You naughty pony, I'll have to pay you back for that. Twilight reached out and pushed Trixie back, forcing her to lay flat. She crawled over Trixie, straddling her so that her dripping cunt was hovering just over the other mare's face. Looking down at Trixie, Twilight merely smiled at her and lowered herself so her lips met with Trixie's. She could feel herself winking in Trixie's face as she rubbed her pussy on Trixie's mouth. Tensing a bit, she felt Trixie's tongue run all along her lips and inside the creases of her folds. Just as she had done to Trixie earlier, Twilight bit her lip, grinding against Trixie's face. As she could feel that pleasure building up inside herself, Twilight continued to rub against Trixie, but also moved her hoof down to her clit. Like she was a DJ, Twilight played with her nub, feeling the pressure build up more and more. She clenched, holding it back for as long as she could, as she kept massaging herself. Eventually, however, it was too much and, like a dam breaking, she came all over Trixie's face, the cum squirting out in a handful of bursts. Trixie held her mouth open, catching as much of Twilight's cum as she could, then licking the liquid off Twilight's pussy as well. Breathing heavily, Twilight tossed her head back, laughing to herself. Well, that was definitely something. Twilight rolled off Trixie and lay by her side, their hooves behind each other's backs. Trixie turned to look at Twilight and smiled at her, her face sticky with Twilight's goo. She smiled, strands of the liquid dangling from her lips. I do have to admit... That was much better than using the doll. Rolling over a bit, Twilight smacked her lips and said, Next time you feel like masturbating, just knock on my door. Or, you know, just do what you did last time and let me walk in on you. That was fun too. The two mares chuckled and Trixie blushed slightly. Twilight pursed her lips, bringing them to Trixie's. They kissed for what felt like longer than the sex had lasted. Twilight fighting for control of Trixie's mouth with her tongue, while Trixie did the same but in reverse. With their tongues rubbing up all over each other, Twilight found herself wishing she'd kissed Trixie more. As did Trixie. But eventually she had to pull away. Saliva, mixed with cum, hung between them, suspended between their lips. Trixie's face was red now, more than it had been when Twilight was humping her ass, which was certainly saying something. She swallowed nervously, though also just to get a good taste of Twilight's mouth. Twilight, she said quietly, I didn't tell you this before, but... The reason I came back here was because I... Twilight shook her head, silencing Trixie. She smiled softly. Don't be cliché, all right? You think I let you stay here because I don't like you? She chuckled, kissing Trixie on the forehead. The two stared into each other's eyes for a moment, then Twilight said, But seriously, though, Next time, just let me know when you're going to masturbate. Just doing it to pictures of you isn't really enough for me anymore. Trixie raised an eyebrow. Wait, what? Placing her hoof over her own lips, Twilight made a shushing noise, then said, 
Don't tell anyone, though. It'll be our little secret, OK? She took her hoof off her lip and moved it to Trixie's. Pressing the cum-stained hoof over Trixie's mouth, she added, But yes, this isn't the first orgasm I've had because of you. Her eyes wide, Trixie felt herself wink again.